In each of the following questions, the main of primary stress is indicated by writing the syllable on which it occurs in capital letters. From the words letter A to D, choose the words that has are uh, the words that have the correct stress pattern. So, responsible, responsible. So, uh, that is, on which of the syllable does the stress, that is the one that is elongated, responsible, that is option B. Responsible. So, it is on the second syllable stress, and uh, mind you, the B E L the B L E ending words, it's always on this uh, third level from the end. So one, two, three. So it's now uh, kind of have the second syllabic stress when you start from the beginning. But ordinarily, the B, L, E, and the word have a uh, third syllable from the end, which is A. Capacity. Capacity. The same thing as well, the T, Y, ending word, the T-Y and the word also have third level from the edge. So, which also may be an answer. Capacity. Difficulty. Difficulty. So, the T-Y, most times not in uh, all cases now. Culty. Difficulty. That is the C-U-L. Now, on the third from the beginning. Then in the following letter A to D, all the words except one has the same stress pattern. Identify the one with different stress pattern. This is another way you can have the questions being rolled out because at times you'll be given some questions where you are asked to choose which one has the same stress pattern with the one given. And of course, in different uh, times as well, you can be given, you can be asked to look for the one that has a different stress pattern. And of course, as well, the third type of question could come up with choosing the word that has this, the correct stress pattern, like the one we just did. So we have this, madam, support, people, weather. So support is having second syllabic stress. Meanwhile, madam, people, weather have first syllabic stress. So support is actually uh, not having the same stress pattern as the other ones. Behave, control, human, mistake. Human is having a different stress pattern from the ones we have here. Behave, they have, that is second syllabic. Control, mistake, that is second syllabic. But human has a first syllabic stress. So it is the odd of the four. In each of the following sentences, since the word that received the emphatic stress is written in capital letter from the question letter A to D, choose the one to which the given uh, kind of um, stress is appropriate. So now let's look at the appropriate answer to that. And when you're talking about emphatic, also known as contrastive stress, that is having to tell you uh, to the question that lays emphasis on the word that was emphasized. So that is why you have the emboldened word. So anyone that is different from the emboldened word seem to be the inappropriate, the, the question that will bring about the inappropriacy in the uh, sentence given. Now, his grandfather will be 80 years old next year. So the uh, emboldened word here is grandfather. So any question that has to go with inappropriacy with grandfather here will be the one to ask the question, the appropriate question here. So, looking at, say, the grandmother, the grandfather, you can see the three options, the other three options here, are still talking about grandfather here, but only this one is asking about grandmother, which contrasts with the issue of grandfather here. So, option A is an answer. Kindly subscribe to our channels, and uh, also remember to hit the notification bell as you learn more from most of these topics are for treated and uh, from every other uh, subjects we have in store for you. The doctor advised her to have eight hours of sleep every day. Advised is the word advised, is the word that is emboldened. So any of these that has to go against advised will be uh, an inappropriate question to answer the appropriateness here. 
So looking at this, we have advice here. Advice, advice. And of course, looking at option B, say, did the doctor command? No, he didn't command, but advise. The police arrested these men for robbery. This, this, that is, uh, we are talking about uh, plural near entities now. These men. So looking at the options given, we have these men, this, this. But of course, looking at option D, it's coming up with those, which is incongruent with what we have here. So that is why it has to be the one to be inappropriately answering the appropriateness of these here. Then from the word letter A to D, choose a word that contains the sound represented by the given phonetic symbols. So many a time too, symbols could be given that is the phonetic symbols, be it uh, maybe consonant sounds or vowel sounds then you'll be asked to pick options that actually contain the sound, the representative symbol given. So here we have some of them. A, A, of this, praise is an answer. Praise. Of course, this is can, pit, field, praise. U, long U, U, that is food, food. The other ones are short. Push, could, foot. But food, oi, oi, boy, boy. That is the pronunciation. So it's represent the, the symbol here is what is to be realized here. Uh, kindly subscribe to our, our channels and also remember to hit the notification bells for more information and uh, also uh, for more of the treated uh, topics per subjects in the channel. In each of the following sentences, there is one underlying word, underlying word, and gap. From the list of the words lettered A to D, choose the one that is most linearest, most nearly opposite in meaning to the underlying word and will at the same time correctly fill in the gap. There are two things to be done. One, make sure the word is antonymous. Then as well, at the same time, that can correctly fit in. Because most times that is what... Uh, Candidates do not know. At times we can have, uh, where you are asked to choose synonyms, you can have more than one synonym. But you are talking about the appropriate, appropriateness of the word you have to choose. So also the same thing uh, occurs when it comes to antonyms. You can have like two or three antonyms, yet in options. But it depends on the particular field, that is the conceptual, the, the, what concept is discussed. So that is what will bring the contextual meaning of what you are to pick as answers. So here we go as we have some of them. Fanta was appointed on probation and her dash will be determined at the end of the year. We're having probation, approval, confirmation, induction, upgrade. Of course, confirmation. Uh, that is the opposite of probation. Tina is paid a dash salary, but she receives a handsome interest from her savings. So you can see the word handsome used now. And some which may be something that uh, may be good looking, uh, but it is used for interest or in form of money here. So that is why we are talking about the context, context it is used. So which brings about the connotative meaning. Tina is paid a mega, mega, because and some here can be replaced with a kind of huge. So mega is small. So and uh, looking at uh, lonely or minute, they also mean small, but we are talking about salary here. So, mega. The cashier was urged to issue the original receipt and file the dash. So, original. Of course, you can have fail for a duplicate. This may still go on well with, okay, original, fake. But you are talking about the issue of receipts. So, of course, receipts, the essence is actually ought to issue the original, then it files the duplicate. So it doesn't mean that when you have original here, the next thing should be fake. So the duplicate of the, uh, of the receipt should be filed. We sometimes think students are ignorant when in fact they are dash. Ignorant, knowing nothing, then we now have well informed, well advised, well behaved, well trained, well informed. Well informed stands here as a good uh, antonym to ignorant as used. No sooner had the priest finished preaching, the people sh should be dashed than the ruthless robbers struck. 
ruthless here. Yeah? It will contrast with humane. Humane. Humane will be an opposite of ruthlessness here. Yeah? Humane. Yejide understated the seriousness of the case. Her brother, however, dash it. So understated. So this antonym, inflated, overrated, emphasized, exaggerated. Of course, exaggerated. Exaggerated. Where we have this inflated, overrated, of course, can also answer to be uh, treating or making mountain out of a molehill. But the best word to use, that is why they say that can fit in, that can directly fit in where it is used. So we have exaggerated. Stephen is dash, in spite of his brash appearance. Brash. Stephen, then what could be an antonym of brash here? That is modest. So modest option B answers as antonym to brush. Then from the words letter A to D, choose the word that best completes of the following sentences. That is where we have purely structural aspect. That is which word should be used in a certain kind of field or not so. The lorry swerved and dashed in a river. So since you are having a river there, then uh, having, having swerved, so it means plunged. Plunged to be simmered in a river. Plunged in a river. His kinsman dashed him as a traitor. What could he have done, uh, done to him? Denounced, disregarded, demolished, indicated. Of course, denounced. The kinsman denounced him as a traitor. There are a wide range of employment, employment dash for use in Africa. Employment means chances, facilities, opportunities. Of course, employment opportunities. That is the best word to use. The lecturer was asked, to dash a statement for sanity to prevail. What will it be to do to a statement? That is to eat it back. That is to retract. To retract. That is uh, behave as if having said that before. Uh, so that is the, the lecturer was asked to retract a statement for sanity to prevail. So that is the structural word that should be used uh, that can best fit in the line. The doctor listened to my heartbeat with a dash. With what should a doctor would have listened to the heartbeat? That is the stethoscope. The stethoscope. Actually, not a microscope, not a meter, and couldn't have been a barometer. So that is why English, you should be able to uh, have at least residual knowledge about different fields. Because most of it, it's, it's unnecessary if you are a scientist uh, before you will be given these kind of questions. So that is why it is always advised for you to pass very well, choose the uh, right options in English. You need must have knowledge about different uh, aspects and fields and the functions of most of these kind of things. After each of the following sentences, a list of possible interpretation is given. Choose the interpretation that is most appropriate. So that is interpretation, which includes idioms and meanings, phrasal verbs, and some uh, dictions to be used. So uh, mind you, when these ones are done, it is, uh, the, mean, the meanings are usually hidden in the expression. They are not literal, so they have to be figurative. It is not directly the words were said that they have to be understood. So they have more kind of uh, uh, internal meanings which are figurative in nature. I am at sea when it comes to knitting. This means that I, what? When someone is at sea, that is when you are confused or clumsy. You are not actually knowing what to do. So that is very clumsy. Matters came to a head between the tenant and the house owner when the tenant's belongings were thrown out. For matters to have come to a head, it means it's got to a point that uh, uh, a kind of tension should be doused. So where you have to bring about what could be the lasting uh, kind of solution, but it has to do more of dousing the tension. That's a matters came to a head between the tenant and the house owner when the tenant's belonging were thrown out. So the house owner action wasn't the situation. The tenant's action was condemned. The house owner's action calmed the situation. The two parties settled the matter. So they couldn't have uh, settled, but the, there was dousing of tension here. So which means the house owner action calmed the situations. So definitely the tenant 
we would know what to do next. Musu et awes join argument with Fato. What does it mean to eat your words? That is to admit that you are actually wrong. Okay? So apologize to Fatu. Spoke actually to Fatu. Denied offending Fatu. Admitted that she was wrong. Yeah, which is directly what I've said. She admitted that she was wrong. That means she ate her words. He was given a standing ovation for his brilliant speech. What does it mean to be given a standing ovation? That is, everyone stood up and clapped for him. Or some B. Everyone stood up and clapped for him. The opposing party spoke with one voice at the election. To speak with one voice, what does that mean? That means the parties were unanimous. That is, they were in one accord. So they were unanimous in the decision. From the letter A to D below, each of the following sentences, choose the word or group of words that is nearest in meaning to the underlying word as it is used in the passage. We are talking about synonyms here. We have actually uh, talked about antonym uh, previously. Uh, let's look at, uh, mind you, they should be able to be used. Don't forget about the connotative meaning. We're not talking about dictionary meaning here. The connotative, which is the contextual meaning, according to how it was used in the context. So whichever the option is picked, you should be able to aptly uh, fit into the uh, left gap. So we have the next one. The erudite professor is the darling of all students. The erudite professor, erudite here, learned, learned. We should endeavor to buy goods that are durable. What is durability? That is ability to last long. So long lasting, that is durability. The judge who was assigned to the high profile case is without blemish. What does it mean to be without blemish? What is the blemish there? That is stain. Stain. Upon arrival at his village, Ben decided to speak impeccable English to impress his people. Impeccable. That cannot be mistaken. That is flawless. Flawless. Option B. From the group of words, letter A to D, choose a word or group that best completes each of the following, which is also like uh, like we have treated. Senabu's friend congratulated her dash becoming a mother. What kind of preposition do we use after congratulation? That is on. It was congratulated on becoming a mother. Say, oh, I congratulate you on your birthday, not for. So use the preposition on after you use congratulate. In the family, members are always urged to deal patiently with that. Members, we are talking about more than two people here. That is deal with, deal patiently with one another. We are talking about more than two, so we have reciprocation of one another. Where dash you rather study? In Lagos or Freetown? Okay. Where should you rather study? Where would you rather study? Where might you? Where may you rather study? So, of course, talking about the mother auxiliary that uh, to be used, where would you rather study? In Lagos or Freetown? You should know if she can do the job. You should know. There is a question tag. You should know if she can do the, the job, shouldn't you? Because the rule says when you have a positive statement, then the question should be negative. So you have a positive statement here yeah, using should, then the statement should carry not, shouldn't you? The workshop took dash time than we expected. So, and uh, we are talking about extra time now. So now say took much time than we expected. So rather more time, a rather more time, more of time. So that is, what do you expect that, okay, it is not what you, uh, the time you thought you would have uh, finished. That is, and the uh, time is not uh, something that can easily be quantified there. So it took much time than we had actually expected. It was not expected to arrive that so early. So it was, so which word should precede so, yeah? Just, exactly, only, quiet. So it was not expected to arrive just so early. Kindly subscribe to our channels and do not forget to hit the notification bell so as to get more of our resources that can get you trained. Our dash, it began to rain heavily. Walking to school, as I was walking to school, I was walking to school 
when walking to school. Of course, uh, it will be redundant to be including the issue of I there. So it is needless. So it brings about redundancy. So walking to school has began to rain heavily. It's just like saying, on getting home, on getting home, uh, I discovered this. So you, it will be needless to say, when I got home. So you just have to go with the gerundia. Walking to school has began to rain heavily. So that is option A. Comfort dash tears of joy when she had the news broke into, broke out, broke up in, broke onto. Of course, the phrasal verb should be broke into tears. Comfort broke into tears of joy when she had the news. That is option A. We'll need dash to cook for the party. So much gases, a lot of gas, such much gases, few gas. So gas is also one of uh, uh, uncountable. That is, uh, you don't count them. So of course, the issue of gases will not be there. So I will need a lot of gas to cook for the party. So a lot of gas. And of course, we cannot use few because few is used for countable nouns. So that is why D cannot be an answer. Choose from the options A to E. The one that most nearly opposes a meaning to the word or expression in italics. The manager was dismissed because of his nefarious acts. Nefarious, yeah? That is having to do with uh, a kind of questionable acts. But here, so you have a honest. Honest, which is option B, is an opposite to nefarious. There is no point dissipating your energy on worthless ventures. Dissipating means uh, you are actually uh, using up. You use, you actually get them used. So what do we have to be opposite of when you are dissipating there? Definitely that is conserving. So dissipating is having to waste. So conserving is having to store or save more of the energy. So there is no point dissipating. And the opposite of dissipating here will be conserving your energy on worthless ventures. The house was in chaos when the bill was first read. Chaos means a confusion and... Um, no, it's troubles and uh, uh, kind of uh, uh, rigors. So uh, what should come, in as much as you have chaos to be confusion or commotion, then the opposite to be order. The house was in order when the bill was first read. And like I said, make sure any of the options you are choosing, they are apt to the kind of field you are talking about. So the house was in order when the bill was first read. Death is inevitable for all mankind. Inevitable means unavoidable. So then, definitely the opposite will be avoidable. So uh, death is inevitable, opposite of it will be avoidable for all mankind. The principal's decision to dismiss the student is irrevocable. Irrevocable means that can no longer be altered, that cannot be reversed. So then definitely looking at the options given, then reversible should be an opposite to irrevocable. That is, it can still be changed. But if it is irrevocable, then it means no longer can be changed. So we have this as uh, the opposite, reversible.